Hello guys, my name is Lewis from setupvolleyball.com and today I'm going to be going over the 5-1 rotation when you're in serve receive. Now if you're after the 5-1 rotation when you're the serving team, keep an eye on my channel because I'll be dropping that very very shortly. If you enjoy this video and it helps, please do consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends as it does a lot for me. So uh, aside from that, if you enjoy this sort of content, please consider subscribing as we're going to be dropping a lot more content exactly like this. So without further ado, let's get into this. Welcome back guys. Here we are now on the PC to go through the 5-1 serve receive rotations. Uh, before I go into it, I do want to just give you a little bit of background on the 5-1 rotations um, and the 5-1 formation, just so you've got a bit of knowledge before we just dive straight into this. So the 5-1 volleyball formation is arguably the most popular formation used across sort of intermediate and advanced level of volleyball. It's not commonly seen in the beginner game uh, just because it is the most confusing in terms of rotations because it has the most rotations. So there's six rotations in this formation whereas there's only three in the other two. Um, and just to clarify, the five in the five one means there is five hitters on court and the one represents the one number of setters that there is on the court. So some of the advantages of the 5-1 uh, is it provides the most setting options because you've always got them five hitters. Um, just You've got more options when you're setting. So when you're running like a 4-2, for example, you're only setting from the front, so you lose out on that right-sided hitter. Um, and another good advantage as well is where you're always using the same setter, it really allows all of the other players on your team to build up a great relationship with that setter. Um, for example, like running a quick middle is very, very difficult if the setter and the middle aren't perfectly on the same tune. Um, so before we drive into learning the 5-1 rotation, I've said it in the other videos, this one is slightly different because there is a lot more rotations to learn. But I don't think that rotating is difficult in volleyball because ultimately you're, you're going to the same spots on the court. When you're front row, you go to the same position in that front row with the exception of one, if you're the outside hitter in which you play one out of position and the same as if you're the opposite. Um, but in the back row, you're again playing in that same position every time, or at least you should be. So when you say that rotations are difficult, they're not really because you go to the same spots on the court. So when you know them spots, it's more, for me, the trickier thing is knowing where to stand when that ball's about to be served and the best way to get to that rotation without getting in anybody else's way. So let's get going with these rotations. So what you will see on the right side over here, I, I don't know actually much of the right side, it was originally on the left. Um, this is what you call a lineup sheet and it's what your coach or your manager would have to submit before the start of each set. So what this indicates is where each player on the court is going to be lining up. So for example, one here would be the middle, two would be the setter. So if you ever hear anyone refer to position four or zone four, you can now relate to what these mean. So this is the back of the court and this is the front of the court. So position one is the back right, position two is the front right, position three is the front middle, so on and so forth, round you go. Um, and just remember that although you rotate in a clockwise direction, the numbers count up in a counterclockwise direction. So if you want to think of it as the way you're rotating, think of it as a countdown, not a count up. So if this is the lineup that we wanted to dive into the first game with, basically what we want to do is we want to get all of these players into as near to their positions as we can so they're ready for the first hit or the first set or whatever their role is in the squad. So if we can just quickly visualize this and then we will jump to the next screen. So obviously before we had the setter, the outside and the middle. So what we want to do is we want to push this middle all the way over to the left over here, but we need to make sure that he stays to the left hand side of this outside player. Um, this outside player was originally in this middle position here, but because we want them to be a passer in this position, they will step back, they will join the passing line, and again, they need to make sure they are to the right of this middle player. Um, aside from that, 
The middle on your outside will stay in the same positions and the opposite player that was at position five here will just drop back and normally they will be pushed out of the pass. And uh, mainly because when they're, like the opposite player is, they normally hit this ball over here behind the setter, but from the back row. So obviously if they're passing and then have to get all the way around here, it's quite a lot for them to do. So generally the opposite will get pushed out of the pass so they, all they have to do is the second that ball crosses that net, they run around the back of everyone and get ready to hit over here. So I tried to indicate that a little bit over here. So you can see the setter is in the same place over here. The middle is going to come round into this middle position and the outside is going to come straight up to this position to get ready to hit. Opposite is going to go all the way around the back, like I said. And the now this is personal preference many coaches will say that a middle player should be playing in this position i personally like to have an outside to play this position just because as a general rule of thumb outside players are very strong hitters and when your pass isn't that good and the set is struggling over here somewhere it if they want to just if they need an outlet it's sometimes a lot easier for them to just set this middle player at the back who i would prefer to have an outside taking that hit from the back court than i would a potentially a middle player um, and if we pushed them round and kept the outside here behind the other outside, it would be very, very difficult for a setter who is potentially all the way over this side of the court to force a ball to the back row. So in this particular rotation, I like to have the outside player as my sixth player, not the middle player. Your coach may run it differently. If they do, just remember that you as an outside would be where this middle would be and as a middle you would be where this outside would be. So I thought I'd get that out of the way early just so there's no confusion moving forward. Um, I think that's basically everything to do with rotation one that you need to know. So originally you have your setter in this right position where they would not naturally stand. The middle is going to push over to this left position so the outside can come back and pass in a sensible place. Middle is going to come in outside is going to come up opposite middle swap positions and this is how you end that so let's say we've won that point and we're moving on to the next one but we lose the next one we go into our second rotation so obviously everybody has moved clockwise one position so the setter that was at position two here is now position one the middle that was at position one has gone to position six and so on and so forth now, this is how we would be stood on court. These are the positions that we would be currently in. But this over here is how we would want to stack in this rotation. So again, we're going to push the middle over a little bit. And the opposite, who has now moved up to the front of the court, is going to stand behind the middle in this position. Now, this rotation is a bit of a different one because in this rotation, the opposite player, who would be your right-sided hitter, is much easier for them just to stay at this four position for this rotation than it is for this player to run all the way over here and the outside to run all the way over the back. So they're going to stack up in this corner out of the way of these passes so there's no one impeding them, no one's being blocking their vision, everyone can get to the ball. And then the outside that is in the front front row here that you see, he's just going to step back and hide this setter because obviously we don't want the setter in the pass because he needs to be setting the ball for your middle or your opposite or even your outside so we push the setter out everybody else stays the same and then we move on to the next positions so this is how we stacked as i said the second that ball comes over the net let's say this middle player takes the first pass the second this happens this middle player is going to pop the ball up these people will be rotating so the middle is just going to drop down into the middle the opposite is just going to step back and get ready to hit from the outside four position and then this outside player is going to come up into this sort of area and get ready to hit. And the setter is going to either come round beforehand or will run through this gap here and pick up the ball somewhere in this area here. Again, I've got the outside and the middle player swapping because I like to have my outside at position six, not at position five. So I don't think this one's too complicated because for the most part people stay where they are, obviously with the exception of these two if you want to switch them, but even the setter on the outside, they are arguably in the correct positions, they both just need to run forward. So setter comes up, gets ready to set, outside waits for the hit, middle waits for the hit, opposite waits for the hit. And then we go around again. 
So we've won the point, lost the point, won it back. We've now rotated once again. And we are in surf receive, sorry, so we didn't win the point back, but we have rotated once. So your setter that was once at the one spot is now on six. Your middle that was at six is pushed to five, and so on and so forth. So in this particular position, the setter has to be between the middle and the outside. But where they are, they're not hindered by any of these other people, providing they don't go in front of this opposite, they can push up quite far forward. So in this particular rotation, we're gonna push the setter right up in between these two players. Again, he's not affected by the middle. They're not affected by this other outside. They don't come into this rotation. They're not gonna be in any violations of the, of the rotation rules. So this setter, who would be normally back here, is gonna step all the way up here, ready to set. This middle that is in this position currently is just gonna push over to the corner just to allow a clear line of sight for all of these players. And the opposite, who obviously wants to be hitting from position two, is also gonna stack all the way over here with this middle player. So again, the setter can, as long as the setter is between the middle and the outside and behind the opposite, they can move all the way up. And then this outside, who is again gonna be passing, essentially instead of the setter, is just gonna step back into this position. So we're gonna shift this middle across, drop this outside back, push the setter all the way forward, push the opposite into the right hand corner. So just again, opposites going towards the two position, middle stacking with him, setters up ready to take the second ball, outside middle and outside of the passers. Now in this rotation, the setter can basically stay where they are. They don't, they don't really need to move too much. Um, the opposite player is just gonna drop back and get ready to hit. The middle is gonna come round into this middle position just so they're in front of the setter and ready for this quick middle. And then in the back row, the outside is gonna step forward into the hitting position, the middle is gonna slide across and the outside is gonna slide across. Again, if the middle and the outside are the other way around, what you would do is the middle will just stay where they are and the outside will just move straight into this position over here. And that is rotation three. So moving on to rotation four. So rotation four, we would have our setter at five, middle at four, outside at three, opposite at two, other middle at one, and our other outside at six. So on this particular one, we have our outside in this middle position here. However, we want our outside to be in the pass. So to get around this, we're gonna push this middle all the way over to here, and we're gonna drag back this outside. Now the outside and the setter don't come into each other when it comes to the rotation. So our setter here can push all the way up and hide behind the middle up here, so they aren't restricting the view of any of these passes. Our opposite, already in the right position, is just gonna stay nice and tucked away over there again, so they're not in the way of any of the passes, but still ready to hit. So that's how they would stack, as I just said. So mid is gonna tuck in the corner, set is gonna tuck in behind them, outside's gonna step back to pass, making sure they are to the right of the middle player. Once the serve has come over, our players can start rotating, providing they aren't taking the first ball. So I've shown the middle doing this really drastic run here. Obviously the middle, the, the, the reason I say that is because this is how they would probably actually run in a game because it all happens so quickly that the second that pass comes, the set is waiting here. The middle isn't going to come back to this middle place and stop and just wait because they don't generally have enough time for that. So they're going to sort of do like a looping run. So they're probably going to just step in here, keep watching the setter and then explode. So it's not a case of they're going to run here and wait at this position. It's more just showing like how they would actually run and where they would go to. So just to clear that up. So your setter is going to run to the other side get ready to set from this between sort of two and uh, between three and two so like a two and a half or 2.5 it's sometimes called that's ideally where your set is going to be setting from you're going to have your opposite tucked in behind them ready for the reverse set or if it's a particularly off pass and they've served over here it may just be a forward set your opposite's going to be tucked in ready to hit your middle is going to come back to this middle position again ready to hit and your outside is going to step forward and again be ready to hit in the back row as I've said, I like to have the outside at six. So in this particular occasion, the outside is gonna stay exactly where they are and the middle is gonna run over to this position. 
obviously if you aren't playing a middle at five and you are playing them at six then just swap these two around and continue like nothing ever happened so moving on to rotation five in rotation five it's a bit of a funny one because you have half of your team all stacked over to one side of this, the court the main reason for this is we want the outside to still be able to hit from the four position so what we're going to do is this opposite is going to come and hide behind this middle player again we don't normally have the opposite in the past the middle is going to step across outside is going to step across and this outside is going to come all the way back over here now obviously with this outside player he can't go behind this opposite and he can't go to the left of this middle player so to avoid this obviously the opposite is hidden so it doesn't really matter they can even line up with this pass but i've shown him just in front just because sometimes the referees aren't always that clued up so don't even give them any chance to say oh you're out of rotation so just step slightly in front of them that's what i always do but to ensure that this outside player can uh, sorry this outside player can come back and pass in this position we need to push our middle all the way over to the left and obviously because we're doing that our setter then needs to be pushed all the way up to the left because our setter can't cross to the right side of the middle so this is the lineup that we've got we've got the middle and the setter stacking in this corner the outside to the right of both of them players but still in front of this opposite so they're still in rotation so the outside all they have to do if they don't pass the ball is just come forward into this position get ready to hit Sessa's got the longest and most daunting run because they have to make it all the way over to the other side of the court. Although obviously the team can help out a little bit by passing on more more sort of towards three than two and a half or two, just so they haven't got quite as far to run and have more time to decide where they want to set the ball. And then the middle is just going to come into this middle position and get ready to hit. So that's what I've shown here. Sessa running across, middle running to the middle, outside running up. Opposite is already in the correct position because they are a backcourt hitter here and again my outside here is going to stay in the exact same position they already are because we've pushed this pass around and the middle is going to run over to the five position here so once they've all rotated we're going to have our setter at 2.5 middle in the middle ready to hit outside at the wing ready to hit opposite ready to take a backcourt set outside even ready to take a backcourt set and the middle over here at five ready to go and that is rotation five. So lastly, we have rotation six. So your setter has now done a full lap nearly in the very last position before they get back to home base over here. So your setter is now at position three, middle at two, outside at one, opposite at six, other middle at five, and your last outside at four. Now, because the outside here has gone back court, we can stack over this side and leave this outside in the correct position down here. So this outside player is going to come back and pass. We are going to push the opposite out of the pass again and bring the middle across. So you then have your outside, your middle and your final outside passing here. This is what it would look like when we do the stack. So the outside is ready to go. Middle in the middle here. Outside pushed over here and the opposite between the two and behind them. And then over this direction, we're just going to have our setter up in this corner and ready to set at the two and a half position. And our middle just sat just behind them, just so they can come to this middle position and get ready to attack. So this, again, is what we're going to have the lineup. Outside, who is our front court outside passing. Middle and outside, who are our back court players. Opposite hidden. The good thing with the opposite being at the back as well is they can also be quite a nice patrol along this back line. So if they think the serve's going long, Quite often your opposite will give you that information to let you know, guys don't play it, it's out of bounds, our point, move on. But the opposite is going to run round the back, to this back to this one position here, ready for the backcourt hit. And then all we're going to do is everyone's going to move over, so our middle is going to go to this five position, outside is going to move into the six position, and the other outside, who is obviously front court, is going to step up to the front, in front of the three metre line, or on the three metre line, ready for that hit. The middle is just going to run round our setter, leaving our setter at this two and a half position. So this is our final view. Setter at two and a half, middle in the middle, outside of the outside. Opposite at one, outside at six, middle at five. So you'll notice that this looks very similar in every single frame, and that's because 
we always want to try and get the same positions every time. That's why I said rotations aren't that difficult because you're always trying to get back to the same spot. But knowing where to stack, where to run, and how to get there most effectively without crashing into everybody else and without causing all of your teammates to not be able to see the pass, that's where it gets difficult. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Hopefully I was clear enough in explaining it. Um, I know it can be a little bit confusing and there's quite a few rotations to go through. If you actually want these serve receive rotations to print out and take with you to a practice, if you go on to setupvolleyball.com, uh, I've actually written an article about formations and rotations. If you scroll all the way to the bottom of that, I will put the link in the description for you guys. But if you scroll to the bottom of that and click on 5-1, you will then get a downloadable PDF that you can take with you to your next practice. So you can print it out, take it with you. It's got all of the rotations on there. So hopefully you guys found this useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, share it around, help anybody else that may need this. Uh, and lastly, hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much. Bye guys.